All right, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Sanjan. I'll be uh, y'all saw me yesterday. Uh, speed doing a race with uh, Seraphim for Knights of the Old Republic. Uh, any percent glitchless. This time I'll be doing uh, Knights of the Old Republic Two. Any percent glitchless. Quite a bit of a different beast, but we'll be using a somewhat similar build. But uh, without further ado, let's get started. So time actually doesn't start since we have to deal with character creation, but we're going to start with the female Jedi Guardian. Gender is actually important for the speedrun because we actually specifically need to play a female character. Because we play- so because- so a male character will get Handmaiden, whereas a female character will get Disciple. But Handmaiden adds extra cutscenes at the end, which we can't really skip. <clears throat> and an extra fight, which is really bad, so... We are going to get- Pick female because Disciple doesn't add any extra cutscenes. So we're gonna create a custom character. I always pick this lady. She's cute. We go at 18 strength, 14 dexterity, 14 constitution, and 10 wisdom. So standard, <coughs> run of the mill, a DPS uh, gamer build. So we just pick recommended always for uh, skills because we don't. We actually don't even need any points of persuade because. Dom or, uh, Affect and dominate mind are, uh, you know, they, they do the trick in this run. We're gonna pick a weapon focused melee weapons because we're gonna be spending a, a bit of the game uh, with a uh, melee, with a uh, sword, so. I'm gonna pick a random name, uh, you know what? I love Pokemon, so. And name her Tyranitar because Tyranitar is my favorite Pokemon. And I've suddenly decided this is a crossover between Pokemon and Knights of the Old Republic, so. The time starts when we start when we press play. Without further ado, let's go. So we start the game here with the prologue here. We're actually gonna do a little bit of the prologue. Start here with a T3 on the messed up version of the Evan Hawk. This is kind of like the tutorial section, aside from uh, our good old friend, the uh, Paragus. This like literally voices everything over for you, but we're he going here because we need a uh, computer spikes, and it's relatively hard to get computer spikes uh, in a speedy manner at Paraga. So this is why we this is actually the quickest way to grab computer spikes, and that's actually a decent amount of rounds. Sometimes it can take a uh, T3, a couple hundred years. Do you want bypassing? To open to bash open that footlocker, and after that we can just uh, head on out of here. So the main character of uh, Code Over 2 is a little bit different, so we are called the Exile, who is a person who was once a Jedi who served in the Mandalorian Wars, but they kind of, you know, after the Mandalorian Wars, they ended up severing their uh, connection to the Force. And then this is pretty much your adventures of gaining uh, said Force powers back. They're basically a... Uh, you're basically an anomaly, whatever, however you call it, to say the least. So we're gonna, we so we have to open this, grab it, and then you know this uh, old lady, you know, just suddenly creepily wakes up. Fine. You know, no, no context. But this is also a tutorial on equipping the plasma torch, which is unironically probably one of the most useful weapons in the speedrun, because this instantly opens doors. It's actually even better than a lightsaber for opening doors that are not force fields because the animation is instant, whereas uh, with a lightsaber, you kind of have to wait to open it. We're just going to run through here. I looted that vibral blade because it's going to be useful for later. And then we're going to break open this uh, footlocker here for some grenades. So we loot these uh, foot lockers here as well because we want ion grenades and they're going to be much useful for later. Wow, did I really miss that? So that, that is guaranteed to contain some items. They're guaranteed to contain ion grenades and a stealth field enhancer. Otherwise, most of the... Um, unlike Coder 1, most of this game it has uh, very random drops and... We actually have to kind of account for that. Which is why, like, for most of the game, we'll be relatively weak. But once we get the... I forgot to level up here. This is just a easy level up. 
Our weapon fighting, and we learn four speed because we like going fast. And now we're gonna get introduced to our first character here, Atten. Are you an angel? He is kind of like a scoundrel, slash uh, fighter pilot. We match one through this entire conversation because we actually want to pick the the option where Karf is not the admiral. I forgot if he's alive if you spam one, but basically, if you have Karf as the admiral, you get a lot of extra cutscenes. Add it onto it, so we don't want to deal with that. <laughs> and so now we're trying to see like if there's any survivors on here, and then you know we get end up in the communication with our friendly neighborhood droid T3, the goodest, and purest of droids. So we kind of ask him to help us out in getting out of here. <coughs> we're gonna. So we kind of need to get the <coughs> field depot doors open here. And we're just uh, scrolling along. This game, like Killer One, is also based on uh, <coughs> Dungeons and Dragons, so there's a concept of saving throws, your base stats are a huge part of it, etc. Admittedly, it's been a long time since I played D&D, uh, &D, so if my details are spotty, I'm sorry. But this is- but Paragus is basically kind of like the terrace of, a uh, Coder- Coder 1. And here we're going to, uh, see T3 get, uh, unfortunately disabled by some evil laser, bad orangey. So. Let's spam one through that conversation with Atten. Yeah, Paragus was meant to be like a tutorial map, but in a way it does kind of drag. Thankfully, Paragus is actually shorter than Terrace. Can you read me? The Paragus is around like 20 minutes, whereas Terrace is like 26 minutes. So we loot those containers because again, gives us some guaranteed items. And here, we're just running through the mining tunnels. I actually want... I'm gonna loot here for a sonic grenade. And then I want to hopefully find the alacrity in these corpses here. It's not a guaranteed chance, but an alacrity here saves at least uh, 20 seconds or so. Because, because we actually, uh, so in Color 1, there's a concept called duration glitch where if you transition through an area, time gets artificially added to your, any of the status effects you have, whether it be stims, stuns, etc. We're gonna check out the containment field here, but unfortunately, Coder 2, uh, it's not really a thing, so. Yeah. Is that a new party member? Uh, the guy in the the guy talking to me? Yes, he'll be one of our new party members. Well, unfortunately, we didn't get a alacrity here, which is not a big, I not ideal, but it's okay. But it's always annoying when you don't get the the items you want. So we find a dead body here, and we find a an HK fifty, which is basically a wannabe HK forty seven, as I like to call them. So they're gonna be like, yeah, well, you can't really get out of here or something like that. And then we're like, okay, well, let's find another way out of here then. And then we're gonna break this uh, little console here because it's faster. Hacking through it and then slowly make our way through. Be sure it's that uh, go kaboom. We're gonna open the storage uh, locker here for a spacesuit. I'm not actually gonna wait here a second because I want four speed for this area. And I think everyone remembers how slow the, the spacesuits are in uh, Coder 1. Well, today's opposite day. We're gonna go really fast, freaking fast with the spacesuit.
But you actually go a decent amount slower here, which is why I opted for wait to wait for four speed. And it's uh That's about pretty funny anyhow. And so we're gonna get this really long cutscene, drawn out cutscene <coughs> of uh the ship called the Harbinger landing on the Paragus mining station. I mean, I guess it's a realistic depiction of uh, you know, how <clears throat> how ships land on a on a station. I guess is where they wanted to portray it. But yeah, this game is actually significant. This this game is about like 25. 20, 25 minutes longer just because there's a lot more cutscenes than more difficult fights since we are weaker which since we are weaker for a longer period of time and unfortunately we we don't have access to many really powerful stims but we do we still have regular stims which is honestly okay but you know well, they're enough to get us through which is why like we're gonna try to pretty much uh, avoid a difficult combat as much as possible until we get more powerful. <coughs> you know, we're just uh, trotting through. And yeah, because we don't have the duration uh, glitch that is legal in Coder 1, like, we're gonna run out. We run out of force. Pretty fast since we're a Jedi Guardian and we don't have much uh, force power. So we're just gonna run through this area of more angry, angry turrets and droids. These turrets can stun you, which is really annoying. So hopefully that won't happen. Here I got an alacrity, which is going to be very nice for the second section, and then I'm going to break this console. Sometimes it doesn't work the first time, because this game is very jank. And then we are going to uh, be the old lady again, who is, Freya, unironically the best party made in our speedruns, because we have a force spawn with her. We need her. to make our way to the docking area on this level. I fear the airlock and so what this force bond so does is that we share effects guard. that we gain on each other so when I cast force speed Kraya gets force speed too and Kraya also starts out with force speed which is incredibly useful because we basically kind of share a force pool and unlike in this game unlike in Coder 1 there is no there is no really gather your party restrictor so basically you can transition anywhere you want without your party members being close to you and we are going to take full advantage of that. The only place Good where transitioning would work is if one of your squad mates dies. Yeah, so HK's value is just like, you stay there or else we we shoot at you. And, wait for and then we're like, nah, we're good. We're going to shoot at you. And when I mean shoot at you, I mean throw a grenade. We're going to throw a Ion and Sonic grenade. Those things are going to on us. And then I'm going to... Take this opportunity to move back here. What is it? And then that pretty much will instantly kill uh, HK. You're we want to loot HK because we get an item that sells for 3,000 credits. It's incredibly good. Say the word. What is it? So I'm going to do a little bit of macroing here. Something. And then we get introduced here to the influence system. So basically, yes. what you say, which is kind of like the approval system. And Dragon Age 1. Pretty much. I want to turn solo mode on you. I hear you. So the influence is basically like depending on what you say to party member, like they'll you can gain or lose influence with them. And And it's not significant in this speedrun, or at least it didn't used to be. But you could basically, uh... Pretty much, uh... Say the word. Turn members into a Jedi. So, Atten is an example of someone that you can turn into a Jedi. Spoilers. 
if you gain enough influence with him. I believe it also works if you have like enough negative influence on him as well, so kind of like the rivalry friendly system in Dragon Age 2. And yes, you can get HK-47 as a companion. You have to rebuild him since there's missing parts to him. And then so we're gonna get at and I have a bad feeling about this uh, little dialogue. Get through that. And then we get this uh, long, so a little bit long unskippable cutscene where we kind of see like evil TM Sith Lord. So this is a Darf Scion. He's obviously very evil TM. And then Kray is like, oh yeah, don't worry about, don't this worry about it. Or it's all good. I am not defenseless. He cannot kill what he cannot see, and power has blinded him long ago. Run! Very interesting I shall character. be along shortly. Honestly, there, this game is just like, brings so many interesting themes that you wouldn't really expect in a Star Wars game. I'm gonna break this foot locker here because it has a vibroblade. And we're gonna open the maintenance shafts. He he's looking he he looks pretty pretty sus I would say you know the you know, the kind of scrunchy looking body and face you know he looks like he sleeps with vibro blades you know definitely uh, you know a sus vibe definitely probably saw him venting in medical tell me. And then we get to see the fight master. between uh, Kraya and Sion. Your senses betray you, as you betrayed me. After all that's happened, still you live. You are difficult to kill. For one, definitely not you. foreshadowing Perhaps here. <coughs> you have fallen so far and learned nothing. That is your failing. The failure is yours. No longer do your whispers crawl within my skull. No longer do I suffer beneath teachings that weaken us. And now you run in search of the I mean, Jedi. You know, he definitely They're looks like he dead. spent a little bit too much time Save sleeping with Viral Blades and, and being in the vet, you know. The darkness that is to come. Perhaps we shall see. And then we get this little, uh, fun little fight here. Oh. Now, remember, remember what I said about, you know, sharing effects between the main... Character and Kraya, yeah. Basically, uh, your character kind of feels like their hands What's got wrong? cut off. Are you soon. all right? And turn solo mode on here, and then we get to see T3 who's back in the party. Good to some droids, so. so we need to get through this area, and for whatever reason, uh, get through this area. We need to detonate all these mines, which is really annoying because these mines actually do quite a bit of decent damage to you. That's why I turned on the energy shield here, so, which uh, absorbs uh, blaster damage. And I'm going to uh, head pack here. I'll save the alacrity for a little bit later on. Gonna open up the little fields here. I'm gonna use my lacrity here. This lacrity will last us until pretty much uh, the end of the segment, so, which will save us some time. So, well, some of our party members do have special abilities, like Atten, for example, which won't be much of to use because we don't really use Panians other than Kraya and. A later character, but Adam has the ability to kind of like, as long as there's someone alive, it's pretty much automatically revive himself to 1 HP, so basically he's kind of pseudo-immortal, as I would say. And T3 is just the goodiest of droids. I'm gonna level up here because leveling up uh, actually gives us uh, HP back. I'm going to go get a uh, focus lights here for later, and I'm going to learn effect mod. 
So we're leveling up kills you entirely, which is useful because we run through a whole truckload of mines, as you see here. I use some med pack here for safety. And then this speedrun fashion is still faster just to destroy consoles because it still opens the doors anyways. We're fine with getting poison. Uh, so a bit of a sound warning. Next section is gonna be really loud. I will do my best not to uh, kill everyone's ears. I'll try to lower the volume a bit on the OBS right here. But for everyone's uh, save everyone's ears. And there's a cutscene with Atten here that you can skip sometimes. So I managed to skip it here, which is pretty nice because it saves like 5 to 10 seconds. And then, yeah, this is kind of like the tutorial, like pseudo uh, turret section with the, with the star shifts like in Coder 1, but the audio balance in here is really bad, so if it's still too loud, I'm sorry. Well, we basically have to kill, I believe, a set number of Sif here. Before we can uh, head off. And yeah, you can also use your left mouse and 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 a uh, space bar to uh spam shoot. Alright, so where should be Gucci here? Well, also in private, we will be mercifully free. And then the we're required to talk to Kraya about, you know, fools. whatever the hell just happened, uh, we know, with her and getting cut off, uh, you know, etc. But we're gonna do a very long conversation with her, which I will need to focus for a moment here. Have you come? Three, one, it one. Do one, three, three, four, three. And this will give us uh, alignment points, so we actually want to farm alignment points for a very specific reason. So one of the characters' uh, recruitment is tied to the amount of uh, alignment points we're at. So we need to be either uh, we need to be either light side. Uh -oh. Or more light side or more party. dark side, or we, we need to what happened, so don't arm blow 50 al total alignment shifts. Tell me I'm not going to jail again. In order to uh, recruit this character, because I want to get this character at a very certain time. Because when I mentioned that every we don't most we don't we have to manually train also to be a Jedi, which is kind of slow, and we ha there's going to be a portion where a couple portions where we can't play as our main character, so we need a character yep. that's a Jedi that is just good enough. So, if we do take a little bit of diversions here, it's because we want to farm well, alignment we ships. Might be here for a while. Might as well and get yeah, as you saw, we got the Paragus, and now we're at Telos, and we got captured. Because, uh, you know, we they think we apparently caused a big amount of so ruckus. This is the last of the Jedi. And then this guy admit, comes to assassinate us. Apparently, you know, he just opens the, you know, he just opens the, 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 the containment cells and just attempts a 3v1. As he has a, he thinks he has a blaster and he thinks he's a good gamer, you know. Pretty bold of him, I have to say. These will serve. And so we get some log segments here where we're just gonna rest and. Our mates will try to talk about it, but we're like, nah, I'm speedrun, I'm trying to go fast. I'm trying to, you know, speedrun getting my powers back. Pretty much. So there's gonna be two people here trying to call Maybe us. It's actually Zerka to... and uh, the Thorians who want us to help them. But, you know, they're like, I don't want to answer calls, that's slow. We that. And then Kray and N talk about, uh, the events that happened during the Mandalorian Wars and why we're suddenly pretty weak. And then we're basically kind of, you know, trapped here. Pretty much in confinement for a while, so... 
I'm gonna go cause a little bit of ruckus. This guy's like, hey, I came out here in person. You know, please talk to Please, uh, notice us, senpai. Pretty much, uh, and we're gonna tag all of these since we're gonna be doing a lot of teleporting around here. So these terminals allow us to teleport. I forgot my direction. Then we're gonna be doing, like I said, a bit of, uh, Park of managing with our party mates. I'm gonna park the main character here, tying solo mode, switch to Kreia. So, you can have your party members generally talk to most of these people. There will be some instances where I need to specifically talk to a party member with uh, our main character. Yeah, so this Choto guy is like, hey, like, I need your guys' help, you know, there's some people, uh, causing rock. There's, well, we need your help if you help us out, you know, we'll help you, uh, Trying to get out of here, go find your ship, cause, uh, quick spoilers, our ship got kidnapped. So I'm gonna park, uh, Ray and Atman here. Just say the I word. Get him. Now we can get through this area by ourselves here. Okay, they wanna... These guys are bullies. But we're picking the light side option here, cause it's the cutscene plays out a little bit faster. And alignment doesn't particularly matter here because we can be dark side or either light side, but we do want to be neutral slash light side for a character that we'll get later. So we're gonna be Welcome. here to get our items back. You will find them in the security lockers. And then we're gonna be doing kind of like the first uh, big shopping aspect, so... A shopping aspect, there's a little bit of similarities, but we do have to approach it kind of differently depending on... Uh, what happens? I hear you. Now I'm you going to switch to Kray and then I'm going to see what's in the shop. So there's two, there's two weapons I primarily want, which unfortunately it did not spawn. So I will take the alternate here. I'm going to sell this because it sells for quite a bit. I'm going to buy quite a few stuff. I'm going to buy around. Have enough for twelve alacrities, nine stamina, and nine. Sh I'm going to see if there's any cheap armor to buy. Which, unfortunately, there's no cheap armor, which makes, uh... It's just gonna make the next part a little bit sketchy. Or, a little bit more sketchier, so... I'll buy some med packs here. Money is fine, and then we're gonna equip our main character here. Fiber blades and a plasma torch, and that's all we need. I'm also gonna level up here, 19 strength. And then we'll learn force valor. And that's shopping trip number one done. So ideally there, the weapons I wanted was a Sith War Sword, as well as the Zabrak Viper Blade. Because these Viper Blades aren't the best weapons, honestly. But, not all that uncommon for them to not spawn, so... We're gonna... So we had to go pick up a package from Chodo here. We are going to do that. I'm glad you And then there's gonna be some assassins that uh come in here trying to take the droid. Uh, uh, I'm gonna go pick them up because good people and they're they attacked us first. And so we talk can talk to this droid just to get us teleported back. through this dialogue again so yes I hear you there's more kind of dialogues that can be mashed through but there's some where we do have to be very careful there's some specific ones I had to pick so I can get alignment points teleport back here as we needed to talk to we need we need to find a way to get the exchange to you know stop bull bullying the Dorians and so we're gonna find this person here. He's like okay well get you in as, as long as you know help me uh deal with uh, the exchange boss here, and we're like, yeah, yeah, we'll do that. And we're gonna go back I here, do. and Kray is like, I don't want to help the good people, because, you know, good people do be kind of lame. And then we're like, well, 
Sorry, Kreia. We're trying to go fast. It's just helping this person is actually faster than helping the Zerka. And it actually is because there's more combat scenes with the Zerka, so it makes it much slower. And we're gonna learn the uh, be resistance here because it's kind of a filler force ability. And we're just gonna come in here. We're gonna tell this person, oh yeah, yeah, we have an appointment. That's why I learned force uh, effect mine. I'm gonna use my basic stems here. We got a decently big fight coming up. With. I get to deal with a lot of these mercenaries, so. These mercenaries aren't too bad to hit, but sometimes, for whatever reason, our main character can like to whiff quite a bit. And yeah, we don't need to worry about equipping our uh, companions, because they actually do pretty much decent damage without weapons or armor. But what I do tend to try to do is position... Like, whenever Atten attacks, I do try to position enemies, uh, so that Atten can sneak attack on them, which deals actually quite a decent amount of damage. So, basically we're gonna be like, now nah, we're double-crossing Lexa here. As we spam one through dialogue, and then we're just gonna beat up her and her Gamorrean. Oops. And then we're gonna be like, yeah, we helped thee out, so can you leave us alone? And then he's like, sure, we can do that. So there's a, so there's only a couple enemies here that have guaranteed loot. So as you saw there, I intentionally looted some corpses, and we got an exchange negotiator and Benox Blaster. They sell for a decent amount of money, and the money route in this uh, category is actually somewhat tight. So uh, yeah, Kray is really useful to bring here just because we have four, so. What is it? I mean, basically, it's basically she's basically kind of like our second force pool, at the least. Help us get around places much faster. And now we have a third Same task word. here. Yeah, I know. Chodo likes to, you know. We're we're girls and Aaron person. At least. I so he's like, yeah, can we get this, uh, you know? We kind of need to grab like a rogue droid. So here, like, I intend I go in an intentional way because you can trigger a cutscene there. And then he's and then we talk to that Zerka guy. He's like, oh yeah, uh, that guy is part of a. Uh, you know, this guy has the credentials for the droid. So we talk to this guy, and normally that those credentials are I think like two thousand credits, but. We want to save our credits, so we're just going to be a jerk to him. And just, just tell him to give yes. give us the credentials or else. And then we're going to go inside the Zerka office and tell the Shroy to come with us. Good day. And then we've- and then Chodos basically- and the folks are basically going to reprogram it. So that we can grab some, uh, some, uh, information, scandalous information on Gurkha, so, yeah, for part of this we're gonna play as uh, our friendly neighborhood joy technician here. And this is just a really simple, uh, mission, we can just mash one through everything. So, there's, a uh, there's quite a bit of more filler content, I would say. Encoder 2 than Encoder 1, which is also part of why it's a much longer speed run. But for uh, speaking of that, there is a restoration mod for Encoder 2, but we don't. It's not using the speed run because it's actually slower, and because mods are generally not allowed for Encoder speed runs. But if we have a use the restoration mod, we'd have to do an extra planet as well as do extra fights for certain characters, and yeah. And yeah, that's really slow. And also, uh, we're preaching uh, droid superiority here. Yeah. 
And then we're just gonna waltz our way out here, because since Jaina's like, oh, okay, you can have the stuff. Basically. I agree, droid AI rights. We stand the goodest of droids. These droids have a mind of their own. And then we just fan one on him. He's like, okay, I can get you a place to, uh, where this person named Baelder is. We can help you out, and we also, uh, gain five free fo force points added onto it. So, a ver very nice. And then we are basically done with, a uh, Elo Station. Yeah. The level up here. Get, uh, Force Deflection, which is a nice defensive <laughs> ability, because we do tend to run Around lots of places with uh that go shooty shooty on us. I'm gonna loot this because it's extra loot and I see it on the way. I know really wouldn't do this in a PB attempt, but since it's a marathon run we might as well and that's the end of uh Tello Station. And then, in classic fashion, we crash land onto the telesurface, and there's someone here. We get to meet Bail Durr. You know you folks like to call him the ASMR master? Got some news for you, General. That shuttle of yours is done for. Scrap. Crashed the shuttle that time, too? And he's uh, actually uh, one of the people that served the... Uh, with the exile in the war. Yes. He's very happy to see the exile. So we bring we bring Kray with us. Mercenary. For free four speed. And yeah, Baildur's gonna be a character we use quite a bit in this next section coming up because he is a mandatory character you have to bring. Another Yeah, we can just literally run through these enemies. I always. I mean, I can't blame him. He kind of lost his army. You know, he's probably still, you know, feeling the effects of uh, the war. Can't blame him. And at the end of here, there's like a huge minefield we pass through. But thankfully, we're very smart. We see it, and we don't care. Moral of the story. Yeah, Bring the stim up here. Because this has some really annoying combat sections. And just... we're just gonna run through the friendly neighborhood folks here, because we don't care. And then we're gonna get through this annoying fight, which is annoying because these folks have shields and we don't have anything that really deals with it well. Bail there does not count. He can choose to use an ion grenade here. To help break down the shield, but I'm not going to for Marathon. Safety. But yeah, you can't take a decent amount of damage here. And as you see, sometimes our main character likes to play the miss game. Gonna heal Bailder. What is it? Yeah, pretty low HP. Well, uh, since uh, their shields are off, I'm gonna take the time to put Bailder and Kray into a corner here. I don't want them to aggro on enemies. I hear you. In the any percent run, you can actually do progress in like five minutes using glitches. It's uh, the the glitch version of Quarter Two is on a new level. 
say the least. This guy likes to heal a lot. At the same time, I miss him quite a bit. So we need to kill all the enemies up here. We can skip this guy, because this guy de on us. Once we get to these enemies up here. I'm actually fine from here on, unless I get some really unlucky crits. Talk to this computer panel. I'm actually not going to spam your asylum because you can soft lock here. And that's this place done. So run through here. I shouldn't. I shouldn't damn die. But this is probably the worst segment, honestly, in this game because we are forced to take Baildur with us. What is it? And these droids here are very annoying to deal with, like, endless amounts of annoying, so... Wow, we have six builds. I'm gonna put all the best defensive gear I have on him, and I'm going to uh, pray that he does not uh, die, so I'm actually gonna do a safety save here. I'm going to stim him up. The of mine so these, for show, so normally you'd need a lightsaber to get through here, but obviously we don't have a lightsaber, so our only choice of breaking down yeah. these fields is uh, Baildur. Yes. So we're gonna park everyone here at the beginning, and we are just gonna run through these rooms. And these droids that right here, they're tough to take down, and they like to stun you. And you can get pretty much chain stun too, and Baildur doesn't have that great of defenses, so... You can see where this is going, RNG-wise. So I just want to pretty much make it through here at, literally as fast as I can without getting stunned. And yes, you can pretty much punch the force fields out with uh, these plasma torches too, but he does need to be the one to break them down. Wow, he just ran up in there. Okay, that's kind of bad, but... Thankfully, I did not get stunned through this first part, which is really good. And then we're going to use a little bit of a fun trick here, because if your party members are too far from you when you uh, turn off solo mode, they'll automatically teleport to you. So... Yep, there's the uh, MC and uh, Kreia here. What's going on? And now we're just going to continue on our... That's rude. Merry way. There gets to be more droids here that we have to deal with. And we can just kind of skip talking to that guy by going through this little corner here. You'll notice why I'm kind of standing like a little bit further back from the middle, because I want to kind of skip the animation of him walking back as much as possible. And yep, there's a stun. And these droids actually also do a lot of damage, so you just sit here and just wait. And yeah, these energy shields help a lot in mitigating damage, but it's not perfect. So we need to open this up. Oh, I think I got stunned. Yeah. And of course, as in other games, you can actually open these items through the menu here, so... Ooh, wow, I got hit with a crit. So there's nothing I can do here, I just have to wait to stun out. That was a really bad second section. Again. I'm gonna go to this corner here to try to lure them into a corner. And then after that, that's it for for the section. I'm gonna take the time to unequip the plasma torch because we need it for later, get him back his clothing, and just unequip everything. And the rest of these doors are uh, just force field doors, so we're just gonna punch these doors. And so this military base, we're actually trying to find our shifts and this place is pretty promising because apparently 
something like that, but yeah. There's one more little minor annoying section that used to be much worse for the reroute. And we had to kill this giant uh, droid here. We used to have to kill it with melee, but thankfully we've got the power of ion grenades at our disposal. But first off, we need the launch codes. What is it? We need to bring Kray through this exact same section. He has a lot higher. She has much higher de defenses than, than Baildur, but she can still get stunned and it's still really bad. But thankfully, the distance where we need to take care is a little bit less. We always have to deal with all these really annoying droids while they try to stun her. Yeah, I just got stunned like that. Need to break the security door. We need the launch codes from here. Throw that now open, and we need to actually loot this metal box as well for some parts for later. And now I can just upgrade and do whatever she wants. And... So this used to be a really difficult fight, but thanks to the magic of uh, ion grenades, this is a very easy fight. So we're just gonna chuck ion grenades till it dies. Because ion grenades deal a lot of damage to this guy, and this guy has like 88 HP? 80 HP or something like that? Nice three hit. And that's it for this section. So, that's the worst section done. And so now we take this uh, place to the Polar Academy, where apparently the Evan Hawk is, and... You know, in classic fashion, again, we crash land. I think there's, this seems to be a very recurring theme. And we have a friendly neighborhood, uh, HK50s here again. But the reasoning isn't really particularly explained, unless you, uh... Well, actually, like, the reason, like, the areas they spawn in... I believe in the Restoration mod, there's more areas that they spawn in, but... This is the... There, there'll only be one other time where we see them. And so we can actually also skip that fight because fighting them is a bigly waste of time, my humble opinion. And and then so uh, I'm gonna enter in here, and then you know in classic fashion again. Lay uh, down your weapons, and you shall not be harmed. We're back in trouble. Then there's some talk between Atten and Kreia. You know something something about Atten's past. Which we won't explore in the speedrun. And we get this long uh, cutscene where we get to meet uh, Atris. Who for some reason has a big grudge against the Exile. And we find out she's the main orchestrator that, uh, you know, stole our shit. I did not expect to see you. Take your and then we're like, well, I don't, I don't care, care, just give me my ship just back. Leave this place. Leave Telos. Come with us. You can farm uh, alignment points on here, but we thankfully don't really need to. And this gives us a little bit of alignment points. Of course, mistress. I will tell the others you are not to be disturbed. And then she's like, yeah, yeah, you Please can have your ship back, whatever. Yourself. Don't we care. To matters here. And yeah, the lightsaber she's holding is actually the lightsaber that we used to have, so if you match one on all the dialogues much earlier with uh, Atten, where you can talk about the lightsaber you had, we just, we had a single red lightsaber. Even though we're part of the light side, you know. We just like red. Red's cool. And then now we're just gonna go round up our companions, and then finally we can, uh, we have the more open expo open world exploration portion. Did I'm so Apologize to us, but you know, we're like, yeah, whatever, sure.
Then take T T three L, and then you're off to the grand, more grand pastures. And now we have our ship back, and now we can finally fly. And then this is gonna play the cutscene where uh, the the exile got uh, you know exiled. At a council for her uh, her bad TM actions. And then we resign our lightsaber here, yada yada yada. And that is the future we must accept. And that is the future we must accept. True. Those Jedi sure like their secrets, don't they? So, the really annoying part about routing this as well is that every time you enter the ship, there's these little extra cutscenes at play, so... This next one's gonna be an example. All I'm saying is that you've gone for a long so we want to try to reduce our trips to the Ebonhawk as much as possible, because these are all unskippable cutscenes, and we don't care, pretty much. And so now we're off to the open world uh, place, so the first we're going to start off with is Korriban. We've hit the ground. This is Korriban. Why would one of the Jedi you're looking for come here? So we do Korriban first here because there's literally no mandatory combat parts. The only one where we have to do some combat portions was, uh, actually cut out. Not too. And we're gonna take At and then Bail Durr here. Let's go. Then I'm gonna lacquer up and equip my items here. And then we want to avoid these skeletal corpses here. Because if we go very close to them, you're going to trigger a cutscene with Kreia, and we don't like cutscene. So I leave Adnan at low HP Peter, because if he dies in combat, he's just going to resurrect himself anyways, so not a big deal. This one's unavoidable, and this next one is also unavoidable. So this is pretty much all like quickly running around here because we're gonna exploit a little loophole that this game never tells you about. Because if you in a casual playthrough you're gonna try to beat up Sion a little bit and then you run away from him, but we're going to uh use a little nice loophole here. And we're just gonna skip that part. So. But still first off we have to do a couple things. And I just leave Bail and that in there because they can take care of the they can punch their problems away, pretty much. Well, here we had to pretty much get ourselves out of here, pretty much, so we gotta... ...open this footlocker, and we gotta fake... ...unquote fake that we're, uh... ...Jedi. These guys like to get in our way. And then we get to a little fun dial fun sequence here. One, two, three, one, four, 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 two, one, two, two. And so this gives us access to the training room. Yeah, core bound since the since the Jedi. Stuff has been abandoned pretty much, uh, you know, just sift things. We start our little fun training sequence here, but we're not even gonna kill these folks here because save the animals. Right, we're just gonna get ourselves out of here. Our alacrity. And then we find one of the ma the Jedi Masters that we're- so basically we're going to different planets. Because we don't find the Jedi Masters, and yeah, this is the loophole I was talking about. You can just transition over here. 
about uh, facing Dion. And that's pretty much the end of Horror Band. It also incidentally gives us another uh, lightsaber part. So basically we do these planets so that we get lightsaber parts as fast as possible. Because, you know, we're these viral blades, you know, they didn't... Well, they're fun and all, they just don't cut it. Well, they teleported out to us, okay, that's fine. That's Korriban in uh, record time. And so now we're done with Korriban, we found one of the dead Jedi Masters. And that, in the Restoration Watch, he's actually alive and he had to go through a planet called... Like a robot, like a robot planet? I forgot the name of it. It started with a T or something like that. But anyhow, our next such destination is Dantooine. We're gonna bring Kray with us for, Another uh... Visitor. For warping purposes as well as, uh, being a free, uh, force, uh... Force user. So we gotta go in here and find out where Vrook is. Pretty much. Do you actually we're gonna do a yeah. little mini shopping trip here because this is the only place for some reason where they sell uh where they sell battle stones. And so we're gonna buy uh eleven battle stones. Yes. And I gotta talk to her in order to gain access to you. The old what enclave. Is what is it? I ran out here with Kreia. And then we're just gonna make our way to the old Jedi enclave. But there's there's only like one big combat portion we have to do, and it's not that bad. If we were to do, like, Narshida or, or Ducks and Furs, there's a huge amount of combat stuff we have to do in there, so we're going to save those for when we actually get a lightsaber and we're more powerful. So you actually can't get into the Enclave right there, but there is an underground portion that we couldn't get to in Coder 1, and now we can enter it. Encoder 2. But these looters are like, oh yeah, there's a bunch of dangerous stuff in there. You you better watch out. They're like, yeah, sure, whatever. I'm gonna equip the plasma torch here. And we're just gonna park Kreia here because Kreia is our main. Yes. You think Kreia and the speedrun is basically our HM friend? The HM friend of Pokemon. Yeah, she gives us force, free force speed without us having to use our our force points. I'm just gonna quickly run through these Ligrets here. These guy, these folks, actually kind of hurt quite a bit. Yeah. He's in a lacquer here because our force will run out. This is quite a long walk. Now please attack this door. Thank you. We're gonna meet the disciple here, which is uh her uh, the character we get if we play a female Jedi, but we're just gonna dip on him. We actually really don't want him in our party because he always gonna be killed by the Ligrex here and we, we wouldn't be able to leave basically. Now we basically kind of just make our way back. Nice little fun stroll. Great. 
the EXI really does love their uh, fun roller scrolls on the beach or something like that. Ready to bring Kraya back out. And then, so we got some information that some mercenaries were hunting Brook, and apparently Brook was going to the cave, so that's pretty much where we're gonna go. And yes, in this speedrun, there is quite a bit of walking around just because we actually don't have, uh... What is it? We actually don't have the ability to transit back to the Evan Hawk, unlike in, uh, Builder 1. But there, I guess there is a trade-off because you don't need your party members to be close to you. So we're yeah. actually gonna get their little tiny detour here. I'll have to say... Sadie. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Sadehead, I think? But... That quest uh, is a very easy quest to do, and it actually gives us quite a bit of credits. That's why we take that little detour. And we go in this cave here, in the Kinrath cave here. Yeah. Well, we're not going to be beating up any Kinrath here, because we're saving the animals. Then we're going to loot this rubble here for the quest item we need, and we're going to fully stim up. And then these mercenaries are holding the rook capture, but we're gonna beat them up because they're good. Good so A little bit built about the build, we actually will be using a. We're build focused on crit because we get items, guaranteed items in this speedrun, which gives us a lot of crit. And when we crit, we hit a lot of damage because later on, a lot of the enemies here are basically sponges. Like they're damage sponges. Kind of unlucky on the hits. But this early on, Flurry is a perfectly fine ability to use, so we're gonna learn Dominate Mine here. Now we have an improved Critical Strike, so we're gonna use that. Now we have Rusky Master Rook, oh, just like that. And then after that, I'm gonna loot this for safety. This is some nice items here. What is it? And then this mercenary guy is gonna be like, "Yo, where's Rook?" You are the. And we're like, this guy wants to take over the the refugees here, like the refugee building here. We're like, "Yeah, okay, sure, whatever." We we don't really want to get into combat with with him because those guys are really tough. <laughs> Now this is probably going to be one of the more funnier parts because the old, or basically spoilers, we are going to be jerks for a very silly amount of credits. We got to go back to the Enclave and kind of, you know, warn them about an invasion, but we're just going to start the battle right there. Pretty much. I see you. And so we're gonna pick this specific your... dialogue here. Just skip like that whole little like rallying speech thing. And then uh Asco is back. And for Sensei, the mere price of 1,000 credits, we are going to let him take over the refugee place. Because we are jerks and we are cheap. We are desperate for 1,000 credits. Uh there and then somehow a... Rook gets out and he's like, oh, bad RNG for these folks. No Better luck next learn. time. And then he teaches us a this new uh, Jedi form. And don't try using this for these form, Jedi forms, Nothing is more well, we actually have some use for later, but this one isn't particularly very good. I don't- I- I forgot the stats, but it doesn't give us very good stats for combat. At least not the ones that we need. 
But it's the first uh, Jedi form we get. And that's the end of Dantooine. We get cutscenes at play here. Thankfully, this one's pretty short. And our next destination here now is uh, Duxon. And incidentally, we also got the last uh, Jedi part, lightsaber well, part we need. You know. And so we need to talk to T3 here because we actually need computer spikes. You automatically. T3 will automatically give us up to 9 computer spikes, which is just enough for our usage. And we are going to go pick up our lightsaber from Bail Dur. General? We're going to get a one handed lightsaber here. And the lights, the color is random if you don't have a lightsaber color, which eventually we got green. We're going to pick a Bail or a Freya and a T3, and we're actually going to reload our game here. Because this game has also has a memory leak, and this game also eventually gives you a uh, fast text, which we can't avoid. But fast text is particularly bad in some spots here because it'll cause our game to automatically crash. We don't want that happening, so that's why we're gonna do a full game reload here. Yeah. I'm gonna send uh, our main character up here. There's gonna be so the reason why you picked Jedi Guardian here because. Not only are they optimized for combat, they actually also have Force Jump, which is an incredibly good ability to get around this place. And the Force Jump to them in, in time, but that's fine. So we are just going to quickly make our way over. And yeah, wire targeting issues are still a thing in Coder 2. It's a leftover problem from Coder 1. Some other cuts in that place here, so I don't want to be too soon. A little bit of foreshadowing of a battle, but you know, in the classic speedrun fashion, we don't care. Just gonna walk away, just like that. So we go here because one of the Jedi Masters, Kavar, is uh, apparently somewhere on Onderon, but yeah, as you saw, uh, the folks of Onderon didn't like us, so we had to crash land on Duxon and, you know, classic fashion. And now we're back on here trying to hopefully find a, a way to get to Onderon. And then we happen to be uh, upon the uh, camp here. We get to meet a uh, Mandalore here. Very much, uh, you know, totally not like a character we've uh, heard before. All right. So we're gonna. So he, the Mandalore wants us to do a couple tasks in order to have him help us out and get to Onderon, so we're just going to basically do that. There's a couple ways you can do it. You, you can actually also get it through doing the doing the fight yeah. uh, circle, but that's actually really slow. We opt for, for doing other stuff without that, so... Them up again here. And then, so... We... So there's a bunch of pulse converters that we have to go grab here. So there's these very particular knots here. We are guaranteed to have it. We got the core here, and then now we can just make our way to the other side. So I go solo mode here because we are, of course, going to be doing some macroing. Get around. Because the last one is pretty much all the way on the other side, and we're gonna use Kraya to take care of that portion when we get there. But we do this whole part by ourselves first, and, uh, 
There is another little boss fight that we have to deal with. So there's a little Sukiyag here that we have to kill for a little mini quest. First off, it's got this little Kanaf here is guaranteed to drop one of the parts we need, so we're just going to beat him up. And so it is possible to uh, die here as the exile because this Sukiyag deals a lot of damage and we got other stuff trying to kill us. Well, while we try to beat up this Sakek, I'm going to run Kreia over and I need to watch uh, my main character's HP to make sure she, do she doesn't die. And there's these little mobs that spawn here. And yeah, that, that quest indicator tells me that we've killed the Sakek, so that's pretty nice that I didn't have to heal her. So there's a little Kanak here that's guaranteed to have uh, 20 HP. But we can just throw a frag grenade and I'll take care of most of the HP. And while she's killing that, I'm gonna loot Keg here. I'm gonna loot these two corpses for some items. I hear you. Yeah, Kray basically punches uh it's for a Kanak to death. This one's guaranteed to have 20 HP, so. And then there's one little more quest thing we have to do here. And that should be it for production. Let's get back to town here with uh cool. We're gonna talk to Zuka here. I'm gonna ask him to pay us for his time because we need credits, lol. We'll level up here for 20 strength, 11 uh, that, and uh, uh, let's see. We're barrier here because we don't have anything better to get a level with. So we pretty much uh, finished everything we need from Mandalore. I'm going to talk with Zuka and have him start a shuttle flight check. After that, we'll head out. And I wasn't kidding when I said this game is string, so definitely Our towards the second stabilized. half. Like, this Let game can crash Mandalore for really silly reasons. I want the shuttle bound for Onderon within the hour. And we get some uh, foreshadowing here of Kreia. Well, Kreia is just very, being, you know, very Wait. creepy. And talking very cryptically to people. And we're gonna stim up here. And so there's a little interesting property because there's certain Sith assassins here who have very high HP and then those that have very low HP. We only need to kill the ones with uh, very low HP. And then once we're out of, I believe once we're out of combat, that basically signals us uh, being able to get to Omberon. So I'm gonna throw these grenades here. I have a plasma grenade here, that's really nice. Oh uh, yeah, having an AoE ability is really nice here, but unfortunately you don't have access to that, so we're just gonna throw a couple grenades here. Please throw a grenade. And it takes care of most of them. So yeah, the... Grab some of this for safety. Pretty much the requirements for this cutscene uh, layout is just a little bit jank. I think that should be it, so... Actually no, there's one more here. So once uh, the non-stealthy-looking self-assassins are dead, we can just uh, try to get out of combat here. Try to put Kreia, and that's it. So we're gonna bring Kreia with us again. Mandalore is a mandatory choice there. I'm going to make a manual save here because I have crashed on Onderon before and it wasn't very pretty That's doing real. everything again. So on Onderon, plot-wise, there's a little bit of chaos uh, going on here. Halt on. Because uh, there's uh, two factions trying to vie for the throne. Kind of like an attempted military takeover type of thing. There's a war between like the, the army and then the queen. Of Onderon. 
Everyone's debating about it, but we don't really care. We're trying to, you know, make our way through. Find a Kavar. And there's these people trying to assassinate us, but we can just have Kreia run through this place. We actually want to specifically use Kreia to run through this place because twice because there's a dream cutscene trigger that happened if you bring the main character through, which is really annoying. General. Yes. I do have to say the folks of Angeron are. You know, they have some particularly good fashion, so I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, if uh, in reality, it was just a fashion war. Who's the better Welcome fashion to... designer? Yeah. We're gonna talk to him because the person who was supposed to help us is somehow in prison, so, you know, we gotta get them out. So again, we're gonna... Oh, that's weird. I'm gonna level up Kraya here for safety because these folks can do a lot of damage. But once we get to the cantina here, we're in relatively safe hands, and it doesn't really matter if the MC almost dies. And then now we've got to, you know. Uncover the scene of the crime here by talking to a couple people. We can help us out. Nice to meet. You. And then they're reporting like, "Hey, we saw some weird stuff yeah. that happened." What is it? And then there's yeah. like a joint outside we can loot, and oh, a good time for level up because I actually needed to heal. Learn master two weapon fighting, night speed. Very useful ability. Hunt's broken droid here. Just extract some things we need, and we're just gonna get back to the cantina here with Kreia. Yeah. And then we gotta talk to this guy to find out, you know, this room. who this droid belongs to. What's yes. Yeah, this line is just mainly a lot of running around. There's no real combat side that we have to handle here, except for one. And then now we've got the, the data we- we've gotten the data we need, and now we just need someone to translate for us, and... Unsurprisingly, it was not a... Oh my, she's dead! It was not a... It was a bunch of mercenaries that murdered. I murdered a lady and not uh, a doctor, back. our doctor friend. And so now we show the proof to the authorities, and lo and behold, he's free. Woohoo! Thanks for getting. And then we find out it's kind of a kind of he got kind of set up. And now we got to beat up the lady that uh, caused it all. So off we go. Pretty much. We are going to park a uh, Korea Mandalore here. I'm gonna stim up. This can be a little hard to hit. Use Force Valor and then. What do you. Just gonna try to beat her up. And in the meantime, I'm going to park Korea close to this person because Mikhail has an open starport visa and there's this lady who gives us a lot of credits. <laughs> Yeah. And this gives us dark side points, but we don't really care. And this gives us 5,000 credits. Very nice. You can't get a really good lightsaber part from her, but we care more about the credits. And then once we got whatever she stole from Dagon, he's gonna schedule a meeting with Kavar for us. You must have. There's more to it than that, and I think you deserve. And then we've an got uh, some party crashers them, here. Men, and watch your aim. Civilian casualties cause a mess of paperwork. I must be from the palace. I'll get word to you when I'm able. Run. What? What have you done to my men? Last. Looking men, pretty sway for a Jedi I master. 
And then now he's basically, and now Colonel Tobin has basically raised a whole bunch of chaos, so we gotta get out of here, pretty much. That's a lot of mods. That's fine, though. We should live still. What? What? I understand. Carry on, then. But be careful. I could have sworn I heard sword clangs in the West Square. Wait. And yeah, that's pretty much our sign to, uh... You know what to do. Get the hell out of this place. The diag and yeah, they're trying to assassinate us too, but... Unluckily for them, we have, uh... Your visa's... We have, uh, free force fodder here, and these guys are, well, for whatever reason, really calm about it. The shuttle... And then that's the end of Onderon 1. And so, unfortunately, we won't be back there, I believe, plot-wise. We have to do uh, one more now. planet. We'll or basically finish one more planet later. before Onderon 2 is open to us. But now we get to do more shopping trips, and Narshida is one of my favorite places because we get to sample a lot out a lot of types of cheese. So. If you folks want to tell me your favorite uh, types of cheese in chat, feel free to, because we're going to be sampling lots of it. What are you? I'm going to do a shopping menu here. I'm going to buy a uh, Hyper Battle Stem, both the strengths, and then we're going to buy lots of alacrities. I'm going to buy nine frag mines, so I think. Some of you might know where I'm going with this. And then we can just talk to, uh, do this. Or a guide here to get back, and we're off to the last planet we have to do. The la second to last planet we have to do. Technically, Onderon is not finished yet. There was a patent to rep. Blah, 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 blah. You're off to Narshada. Well, here we are. The smuggler's moon. It's the We did Narshada last because no, there's a lot of stuff that we need to do and, and space port there's, the uh, qu <laughs> there's quite a bit of segments that where we cannot use the main character. So And some of these segments are actually pretty difficult. So There's a reason why uh, I did talk about cheese. And yeah, we're introduced to this new character named Goto. Who is apparently trying to hunt us down. I think ah, he was the, the one who, uh... You. I and this guy's kind of like, oh, we landed there, but we're like, no, we don't give a shit. Oops, what sorry for language. But that's basically the summary of it. These bullies are trying to beat people up, or like, nah, give me those uh, points. What? And then we're gonna give money to this refugee, and then okay, it's like, why are you giving money to refugees? And we're like, well, we want the free, uh, you know, alignment right. points, but I don't want to talk about it. Because I don't... Talking dialogue is slow. The first thing's first, we are off to the refugee sector, because in order to... Yes. Kind of try to find the Jedi Master here. We gotta raise a ruckus here with the exchange. And so the trigger for getting the exchange to talk to us later on is like really weird. Where we kind of basically have to do a bunch of actions that they don't approve of, so. Technically, we don't need this. But it gives us an extra alignment point and gives us a free uh, lightsaber uh, upgrade. Yeah, normally a cutscene in their place, but because uh, Kray is not close to us, uh, kind of skip. We it doesn't play. So we talk to her because uh, the the main uh, ru exchange ruckus person, ruckus causing person here, is uh, holding her sister captive. So we're like, yeah, we'll rescue her. Now we're gonna make our way through here, and so. 
in order to uh, gain notoriety with the exchange, we actually don't want to kind of force persuade him. We actually want to kill him. I'm gonna stim up here. Use force valor here as well. And talk to him. Then we're gonna intimidate him. He's like, nah, I'll just try to kill you instead. So you can't get stunned here, which is really annoying. I have been stunned here many times, but thankfully it's a really short fight. And then we're gonna be doing the last big shopping mix. Let's see. There's gonna be a cutscene here that plays. There's like the red eclipse is like, yo, who landed on this place? And he's and then that and our buddy's like, well, you know. Stuff happens. I hear you. We're gonna park Kraya here. And then we're gonna do the, another little mini quest here because these two merchants are guaranteed crystals. They're very nice and we kinda need it, so. Ida here. I hear you. Yeah, the one again here. I hear you. Uh, talk to him and buy the next door crystal here. Then we're gonna do the final talk with Ida. Sell quite a few weapons here. We got a lot to sell. Sell this. The Fibroblade, Exchange Negotiator, Benox Blaster. Weapons, because we don't need them anymore. Quite a few Got a plasma grenade we can sell here. So, we want to shop here because this also gives us a guaranteed uh, Opelia crystal as well. Really useful items here. It'll make us really powerful. So, once we have implants in, we are pretty much a lot more powerful now. The targeting visors are really nice. And then we want to actually exactly have 2,000 credits. Let me make sure real quick. So we need exactly 2,000 credits, and this is kind of like, uh, for whatever reason, this dialogue's a little bit weird in that we won't get it again. We failed this, so I needed to make sure I have 2,000 credits for this next section. So, Twin Sun's little illusion here. We gotta talk to this guy to gain attention as well. We give him 2,000 credits. Notoriety with the exchange here. And then we're gonna do the best uh, thing in the world. Please. We're going to force persuade these people to give me, give me all their credits and jump into the central pit. And yes, we actually do this. This is a choice we actually want to do. Because this gives us five uh, dark side alignment points, which is really nice. Basically, getting points in general, very good. And then now we get more cutscenes here. We are introduced to another character here, which we can potentially recruit, but we won't be getting him because he is locked to dark side characters only. And we are pretty much neutral slash light side. What is it? Neutral slash light side characters gets us another character named Myra, which we are going to grab because she is far more useful for the speedrun. And is pretty much necessary for one of the parts. So, we gotta do one more thing here to gain the attention of the exchange. We gotta talk to Balga here to talk about the things that he needs, and that's it. And now we are going to do a lot of segments. So. So we, it's also good to trigger them as fighting points because we use these as just a force jump fodder. And then now these Red Eclipse uh, er, uh, mercenaries are trying to steal our ship, but we're gonna steal it back.
of course. First off, we're gonna go to the workbench. Combat, cause why not? And we're going to put a uh, pistols on the buttons here. Let us end this. And you don't even need to fight these folks. You can just get to the area here and just get some uh, fighting them. And if we do this right, we are going to get our next character. And we did, so that's good. And so this is the main reason why I care a lot about alignment points here, because there's going to be a section where, uh... Where we really want to, uh... Grab this character, and this is Vices, so... He already comes, uh... Be packaged as a Jedi. Otherwise, we would have to, uh, make... Another character, a Jedi, which the easiest person to make a Jedi would be Atten. I actually used to make Atten a Jedi before uh, I routed that out. And then now we're just gonna beat up Vices here. And now, as you see, we're doing much better damage. And. We rescued her, and then she's like, uh, okay, I'll, uh, you know, I'll join you. But now we got to do one big menu here. I'm gonna unequip my lightsabers, as well as this. I'm going to equip vices. The items I have, so... Give her the good lightsaber. Targeting visor. Give her a minor uniform for more damage. And I don't need that. Energy shield. A self-field generator. And let me get back to my character real quick. An energy shield and a random lightsaber for force jump purposes. And I'm not gonna make a manual save here. And if we do this right, I can the exchange dialogue will trigger. Yeah, I think if Coder 1 remaster does well, I think Coder 2 remaster will come along. That's what I really like, and we did it right, so... And now the exchange is calling for a menu for us, and we're like, yeah, okay, and then our squad mates are pretty cautious, as they should be. It sounds like a trap. And then we're gonna get our first instance of a sampling, one of our cheeses. That's gonna talk to us, and, and it's gonna be at the bar here. This cutscene plays out. So, you're the big Jedi that everyone's been talking about. I think your friends are the ones in trouble. So, Meyer's like, oh yeah, there's gonna be some stuff going on. And then we get this fight here. So, normally, because we don't have any gear on that, so it's obviously gonna be really hard, but we do have the power of cheese. So, we just need a. Uh, four Fragmites and. We're both dead, just like that. Well, I better get back to the ship. Warn the others. But that's also why I made Atten a Jedi, because this fight is more manageable with him as a Jedi. But thankfully I found that that uh mines also do the trick. And we are gonna be seeing plenty of plenty of mine cheese. So there's going to be a large sequence of cutscenes at play where we're going to be playing as other characters. And yeah, Myra knocks us out and steals our spacesuit. Where's it? To get through the Jack Jack Tar bar because uh, there's a lot of like poisonous stuff that whereas, where humans cannot be in. So that's why humans have to uh, have some form of protection or like wear the spacesuit. Now we get to see the fun, uh, funky, uh, mini spacewalk session here again. Mm -hmm. 
and then build. So Myra tries to pose as the main character, but you know, she got herself into trouble. Classic. And then you can't match to this cutscene too fast or else the store's closed and we can't get out, but Zez Kyle kind of rescues us. And then now we gotta go find Myra. Like, a lot of Narshida is just basically, like, fulfilling other game side plots, pretty much. And that started to detriment its speedrun, because by far, our main character is the most powerful character in a speedrun. So, we learned breath control here to deal with uh, the poison in here, but, you know, gameplay-wise, we don't need it. We're just gonna run our way, watch our way through here. Dash more to more of this dialogue here. And this is kind of like a tunnel where you can't use your map, but thankfully us speedrunners know the way out of here. So we just follow the mines, mostly. And we are out of here, just like that. And we're gonna get our second form, second uh, side of cheese here. Because, so you either, so depending on your alignment, you either play as Myra or Hanhar. But since we are light sided, we play as Myra here. And this fight is normally really annoying because Hanhar is a lot of HD and Myra doesn't do that much damage. But thankfully, we got uh, some tricks up our sleeves. Actually, gonna do some equip menuing here. Energy shield. The Lacrity here. Level her up. That level up is fine, and we are gonna do more cheese. Let's leave this way. Let's leave this mine should is jelly enough, but sometimes they don't kill. Let's leave this way. And just like that, we knock out Honhar. And thankfully, these uh, beasts uh, that we loot also have frag mines. that as well for safety. And we are out of here. And yeah, the older routes used to have like to actually kill with the blaster rifle and that's like really slow. But thankfully, routing that part out is just basically really nice. And then this guy goes on and on and on about how we, uh, you know, you gotta go take care of stuff. Blah blah blah. And then we are back in here, the same area as the main character. But we're just gonna. Thankfully, this one's pretty short. It's just a lot of force jump fodder. Relatively short section here. That's got in my way. And a little bit of foreshadowing here, which is, uh, you know. This guy's like, everyone, my army, attack the Jedi, but, you know. We find out that, you know, these folks were not here for, uh, but it's 
We're here for the exile. They just wanted to capture her. And yeah. The uh, cap hounds are in the way. And we're gonna get magically shocked. Knocked down. And then Zezkael kind of, you know, convinces her to help our fellow group out, and we get Kreia being uh, creepy again, reviving the uh, Honhar here for some later purpose. Then she gets to use a life death on him. And now we get more segments here. We get to play as T3 again. Yeah, after we talk to Myra here. So we find out that in order to get on the ship where the exile was captured, uh, they're gonna need uh, launch codes to find the ship. And basically disguise themselves as a freighter ship getting on at us offloading supplies onto Goto's ship, so. T3 magically knows that that's gonna happen and you know, T3, being the goodiest of droids, decides to do that themselves. And then this guy won't let us through, but... Now we're gonna get some help here from our friendly neighborhood droids. Yes. And then we're just gonna basically cheese him to death too, cause why not? Off we go. So this is like a little puzzle we have to do, but thankfully uh, speedrunners know how to fix it. And we have the transponder codes just like that. And then You're these HK-50 droids are trying to stop us, but thankfully we also don't have to kill them. We can just run past them. Wait. And now we're just gonna walk on out of the... this place. So the reason why we want to disguise hey, ourselves as a... Our astromech droid. As a... Freighter ship because Goto has been stealing from uh, Vaga's ships. Pretty yeah, much. Kinda... And then now we're here to change yeah, our signatures. To... We're gonna be Myra and Vices. And so this is actually the only time we get to use stealth here. And now we're aboard the Goto ship. Now we are here at Vices. I'm gonna do a manual save here for safety, and we are going to do a manual level up here. You want to- so the reason why Vices is very useful because of stealth run, and the fact that she already comes pre-packaged as a Jedi, don't care about skills. So you do want to grab stealth run as well as improve two weapon fighting and night speed as well. Force speed and alacrity here. And uh, grab some programs here, because that's how we're gonna hack through places. Good um, and this is why we need stealth run here, because we're basically going to be sneaking our way out, because we actually do not want to be in combat. Because not only does this device is very squishy, but we can't talk to uh, these droids here for programs while we're in combat. And thankfully, breaking the open these doors doesn't take us out of combat, so. Or does not take us out of combat, sorry. That's why we specifically want to use a Jedi I have succeeded. You can sneak around. So even though technically Baildur would be a better choice for the speedrun since he's a Jedi Guardian and can force jump and has uh, optimal combat stats, this portion sneaking around is actually optimal. And it's very rare that Vices gets succeeded. caught because these uh, folks actually have pretty low uh, awareness scores, I believe be able to detect vices and stuff, so really useful skills to have. We 
And I gotta get this motor program here. And then now we get to walk through this next section with uh, Myra. Uh, thankfully these enemies don't deal too much damage, but we don't need to be out of combat for this portion anymore so we can run through. These enemies here. But there is a specific reason you're going to be seeing coming up why we specifically choose Myra. You're going to see here in just a second here. So Goto is going to talk about uh, these mines, so, and these are deadly mines which deal a lot of damage to you. But Myra has a special ability where she can walk through mines, any type of mines, without setting them off. For free, pretty much, so... This is why she's a very, very good character to bring for the Goto yacht section. Otherwise, you would have to bring another character behind demo demolitions, like Atten or Baildur, to deal with it. And then now we can unequip the Plasma Torch on her. We'll do this long series of. One, two, five. Five, one, four, choose. How may I serve? And then now these droids are gonna go a little haywire and uh, start attacking uh, these turrets, which is actually really convenient because we actually want them to attack the turrets. Well, normally, we probably have a little bit of a difficult time in this section with that, but. These, these folks actually do a lot of damage to the droids, so it makes our life much easier. Take that while we're doing this one down. And then now the main character is in the back of here. Very easy rescue. Now that's also left to do is just to get out of this shit. I'm gonna walk through a little bit of here. I'm gonna turn on solo mode because we need uh, Myra to get to the other side again because those controls are to be able to get out of here on, on the other side. Then again. And we're actually gonna be grabbing five of these deadly mines for much later. And while we do that, I will macro uh, my main character to get to the ending portion. Good to go. So once I have five deadly frag mines, we are good to go. And all that's just left is just to get that, uh, that port door open. And... And... And that's Goto's yacht. I can't believe... What are you... So, and then Zeskael comes to teach us uh, the Xi'an form. But this Xi'an form should prove it's actually a little useful for the couple next sections coming up because we get a uh, get to deal with uh, a lot of people shooting at us, and that's our second uh did I master rescue? Then an hour. We just need to deal with Onderon too. And yeah, we're approaching kind of pretty much close to the end. About 40, 30 minutes from now or so. But there is a lot of cutscenes that play out between then. This next section is actually another really hard section, just because, again, we can't use the main character for the section. Because there's gonna be like a little side plot that goes on, 
where we had to bring uh, another team to deal with uh, shenanigans going on on Duxin. Rude. And then there's gonna be more cutscenes in our companions that play out. And so yeah, Goto has also joined us because I guess he wants to be a homie and help us out. So there's a series of these cutscenes here where there's a little bit of a rivalry going on between Goto and the remote. And now we are off to, uh, Duxin to start Onderon 2. Let's swap to the Xi'an form. Gives us some nice defenses for later. We're not gonna bring anyone with us, because we're gonna be back to the camp. And so now we are going to bring, uh, two... Three... Three... Four, and six. So we bring Vices, Mandalore, and Disciple. So we want specifically Mandalore and Disciple because those two are the tankiest people and we're actually going to be doing like a pretty hard fight. That will uh, require us to have some meat shields because Vices is very squishy and some of these the boss fight that we have to do can deal a lot of damage to Vices so we basically need a... You basically need a source of a... Uh... We're going to basically need a source of a... Uh... Cannon fodder so that we can take the... We can take the... The heat off of her. Because it's also going to be an area where there's a ton of enemies. But here we're going to use stealth again. These enemies are more, much more likely to see us. But it's not a big deal if they attack us since we uh... We should be able to tank them most of the time. But nobody saw us this time, which is actually pretty convenient. There's a little cutscene here where they're kind of warning, and yeah. We needed a separate party here because there's a ritual going on here, and we don't like rituals. Rituals are bad. We're gonna turn solo mod again, mode on again. The force speed, and then one stealth mode. And then to get the main doors open, we just need to waltz on to one of, one of the consoles here on the other side of this building and just open it. And yes, if you did have stealth run here, you would basically be at walking speed, which is incredibly slow. And at that point, you might as well just, uh... Kill everything. So once we touch this terminal, we're gonna be out of stealth here. Not a big deal, though. Because we can eventually, uh... them up here. my energy shield here as well. Build up some uh, damage. And then I will actually make a manual save because this fight can go really bad. Captain. Once we're very close to it, I will do the safety save. And yeah, we have to face these really hard enemies. Okay, this out. And then so we're gonna face these folks here. And if we walk back here, Mandalore and the Disciple will spawn back to us, and now we just need to take care of them. I'm actually gonna level up Disciple and Mandalore here to get their HP back. 
And yeah, I, if I need to, I can just walk away and they'll aggro on not me. But as you see here, 23 damage and Bias is already on the struggle bus. So yeah, I ideally want Dan to be drawn on uh, Mandalore and Disciple as much as possible, and that's the fight. That's actually a pretty good fight. But now here, we need to remember to unequip Lysis, so we don't we want the lightsaber back onto the main character. And we need to loot this corpse in order to trigger him to come back here. And then that's the... that's it for the, sec the section here. And this game can actually also crash. So, Kray is a mandatory character to bring with us, so we bring our first choice is Atten. You're gonna gear up here, and we use the Freedom Nat short lightsaber because it's a very good lightsaber, as well as the Sith Power Gauntlets because it's a very good weapon. Make a manual save here because this game can crash. And I don't want to do that with potion again. Now we're pretty much uh, very powerful now. Now Onderon's being totally invaded by uh There are two for Colonel Tobin here. Or er, General Baklu here, and now we're making our way back. The Royalists in the bunker are contained. Deploy as soon as the reinforcements arrive. Like Jedi? Here? Men attack! And yeah, there, this category is a pretty high estimate just because of random crashes and random time loss we have to deal with. Possibly from those crashes, so I do try to be as safe as possible with this, but sometimes they're just unavoidable and come, come along at the worst spots. Good, some re We're gonna stay stick to this corner so we don't get tri hit by the, the overloaded uh, console thing right there. And we're gonna see a funny cutscene where these stuff are like, y'all are cowards. Kill you. Let's take care of this force field. And then we're basically gonna skip these folks because we don't care. And so now we've made it to the Royal Palace. Help save uh, Queen Talia. Shut the and then I'm Colonel Tove's gonna be like, uh, no, yeah, you're not getting through this door, but... You now we've got plans up our sleeves. I'm gonna turn on solo mode, and we're Lord. gonna bring the main character down to this section here. I'm not forced jump to these folks because there's a cutscene trigger there, and then I'm gonna force jump to this folk here. We get here to Kavar, who's gonna open the door for us. And then we're gonna be like, hey, how do we open that door to the middle? And then we're like, well, we gotta get to the console on the other side. So we're like, yeah, okay, sure. I'm gonna equip a plasma torch. So you can use a lightsaber here too, but it's not as ideal because the lightsaber time is instant. Stamina here as well for more HP. So we're gonna get through, be getting through some pretty sketchy parts where Gather off. mobs deal a lot of damage. I'm gonna stick to this corner again because you can get hit by that uh overloaded uh, console there. Gotta dodge all of these little really deadly mines, devastating, strong mines. I don't have gonna unequip this if we don't need it. We're gonna quickly open this door here because you can get stunned by these droids. It's very bad. Talk to Kif here. Salia. Immediately pause. 
Let's dim up. And then talk to this terminal. Yes. And now we can just proceed on through. So you might be wondering why I'm just bringing only at in here, but we can uh, walk back the same way we did from Reed and Nad and have our party members uh, warp Watch over out. to us. I've lost control of the beast! Ignore the beast. Into the throne room. The queen must die. Don't blast it all. And yeah, he kind of loses control. We're gonna walk back with Atten here. A force speed here, and then force jump. Force valley here as well. I just went over to us, but we're just gonna beat this guy up. This guy can do a lot of damage of earthquakes. Thankfully, very short fight. And then we get this nice little fancy dual cutscene here. No, I'm not using any mods for this game. Mods are not allowed for speedruns. This is at a... I'm playing this on the, the usual 1280, or the 1280 by 1024, something like that. And we get this little nice fancy cutscene where uh, Kavar goes ham on these uh, supers. It's a nice little dual cutscene. You would destroy everything just for your ambition, Buckley. The Republic, ISIS, ep That is a gross simplification, Talia. Change is a pain. You're getting careless. Then we're gonna be like, yo, what's up? We're here to kill you. And since we do a lot of damage here, one hit him just like that. 9227. That's a lot of damage. I'm not gonna kill him because I think this cutscene plays. A little bit faster if you kill him. What is And then now we're going to Out hide from this cutscene where Kray again this is being can very still be weird. Won, and Onderon can be freed. In I'm gonna talk to Kavar here to learn final uh, force power, which is actually m the best one because the Juyo form gives us an extra, at the cost of some defense, is an extra attack, which means more chances to crit hit and also means uh, a lot of damage to be done. I'm sorry. And then now we're off to the end game. Much. I sense. And the Vices comes to tell us whatever happened down here on Duxon. And then now we get some more cutscenes here where uh, there's a bit of a love tr triangle that somehow, you know happened between Atten, Disciple, and the Exile, even though we never talked to them before, but you know, they've definitely got a crush on the Exile. Must be hearing things. And then more of Kreia being it. creepy. And being very, uh, you know, ghosty with the uh, Disciple here. I'll level up here again. I get Master Crit Strike. I get Force Aura. So we don't really use Force Aura, but there will be something that we learn that will make very good use of it. So we're back to Dantooine because we've rounded up all the Jedi Masters. And they are all located in an enclave. We're going to have a grand fun time with them. Which did a duo form. Yeah, so this also makes us more susceptible to force powers, but there's very few enemies that use force powers. And pretty much, it's, for whatever reason, 
force powers, like the really bad ones that stun us, etc., are only limited to like boss class, uh, Sith slash Jedi. But that's why using Judo is pretty much very optimal. You just to deal with the increased chances of getting stunned. And then this cutscene triggers, which puts us now. New dialogue here. And now this door should be open for us to enter. It was closed earlier. And then now we're gonna get a pretty long series of cutscenes here. Where Kreia kind of follows us through. Totally not foreshadowing. But perhaps now they will And we're gonna have a nice long lost. chat with uh, the council here who's like, Well, you know, you're you're still really sketchy, so we kinda talked about it and we're gonna kill you, pretty much. There's gonna be this long little epic showdown, and we just thankfully mash one through this dire thing because speed runners and we don't care. And we get to see Kreia firing her lasers, as I call it. And oh no, she's showing her true form. Turns out she's a Sith. She's one of the Dark Lords, and she just basically KO'd uh, three uh, take the three Jedi Masters in one to go because she's cool like that. So we uh, so we learned this new ability called Force Enlightenment, and so uh, we are light side slash neutral, and and Force Enlightenment basically combines the effects of Force Speed, Force Valor, and Force Aura. So it's a very good ability that we'll be using. So if you're Dark Side, you get Force Crush, which deals like really good damage. That's what I was afraid you'd say. So we talk to Atten and Disciple here, which are like we don't care. And we find out Freya headed over to the Jedi archives here. It where is such a quiet is. thing to fall, but far more terrible is to admit it. And we also find out Atreus is low key gone to the dark side. Now you all will see the full power of main character, because now we have everything. Eda. Now we're gonna go confront Atris. Showdown TM here with uh, Atris. When I mean epic, I mean well, kind of epic. She said you would fight her and one hit her, just like that. And spam one. Save yourself. Save yourself. And then now we find out the uh, Telos station is, you know, under a bit of a ruckus here. You were looking for me, Gren. And that the a ship called the Ravager has been, you know, attacking people. I'm gonna kick out and out here, cause we don't need him. He's just a kind of cannon fodder. Well, and then we just uh, basically need to make our way over to the docks so that we can get to the Ravager, which is a. Uh, I One of the Sith Lords we have not really talked about, Darth Nihilus, who is, uh, basically eats, uh, basically eats a uh, Jedi for dinner, to say the least. He also ate a whole planet for his dinner, because he's hungry for power, pretty much, and the Force. So 
though. Here we're at the docks now. And then Vices wants to join us, so Vices is basically also a... Are you a prepper? I have Alyssa's master here, and... And the master cutscenes here, so that's why we didn't want Karf to be the Admiral. Since we would have a long cutscene where we talk to Karf here and enjoy the two minute, uh... Bathroom break. Or about a minute and a half here bathroom break, because it's all Mandalore being very, uh... Very cool, like... Walk during an explosion type of deal. Now remember to hydrate folks, I am grabbing my drink of water. extensive structural damage, but its particle fields still maintain a minimal atmosphere within the ship. And our cargo, it's being brought aboard. Soon, teams will be dispatched to the target sites. Do the Republic forces suspect? No, Mandalore. The proton cores do not emit a signature the Republic ships can detect. If they do pick up the signal, they will assume it to be emanating from the ship's missile bays. Did you get an ID signature on this vessel? You were right about the vessel, Mandalore. It is of Malachor. It still goes the wounds of Mandalorian, Mandalorian guns. guns. Then let's and then after this, Art of Vices comes to talk to Malachor talk, you can just five. mash this cutscene. You can uh, make a manual save here, just in case, and then we can just run through here with just only our main character, so... We have to uh, put a bunch of bombs around here. So we are going to try to do that while uh, taking care of uh, Nihilus here. So there's a place where we can place a bomb here. And then these folks are just force jump fodder. And these guys can actually do a decent amount of damage to you. You are a little bit squishy. I do have to be careful with my HP. Get the second proton bomb here. Quickly make our way here. Let's do this again. I'm gonna equip here the Osses Keeper ropes because it gives us a, us a lot more force powers. Deal with. Or force uh, energy. Yeah, in here you can take a lot of damage here, so. Vice is like, hey, that's where everything's gonna start, so they're like, yeah, sure. So now we're gonna have an epic showdown with Nihilus here. Party members are gonna tell go over to us. And he basically tries to suck power out of us, but, you know, turns out that was a bad idea. So he can, uh, use a force choke on us. Which is bad, but usually he'll just attack. And as you see, I'm doing a lot of damage. Yeah, my game kind of glitched out, so... Unfortunately, this is an invalid run, but... This game is just very jank sometimes. 
But the quest still counts as a uh, game complete since we beat basically beat up a uh, Nihilus. Bad RNG, but like I said, this game is very jank. We still don't know why that happens. I think it's if you uh, basically kill him at a bad time, I guess. But the quest uh, prompt still is done, so we're pretty much still good to go. We get a prompt here with Lysis, but since she's in combat, that doesn't play. And once we place a third one here, something bad goes wrong with the final one. And we have to go grab another one. Yeah, even Coder 1 has like unavoidable glitches, but in the end, glitchless is kind of like decided by the community. There, there's just some games where you just can't like feasibly avoid glitches, so we basically work around that. Or just embrace it. But yeah, the fourth proton core that we can grab is located here. Heal here. Because now we can just place the fourth one, which is on the other side. Yeah, I'm not sure. I guess I'm not sure about the speedrun for Assassin's Creed Unity. Yeah, as long as you don't like intentionally like misuse it, is sometimes the rule. Like it depends. And then here we have another unskippable cutscene here, but this is the final planet. But this final planet is actually quite long because there's like Narshada multiple sections. And there's a uh, Kreia who has become Darth Treya. It has been some time. And now we can just mash through here when this dialogue starts. There is much to be done. There is much to be done indeed. Yeah, there's supposed to actually be a lot more content in Malachor 5, which some of it got restored. And then make a manual save here because this game can crash. And then a lot of this is basically forced jumping. We actually want to kill these storm beasts because some uh There'll be weaker characters heading through this later, and we actually do not want any chance of them dying just because these storm beasts are deal a lot of damage. And yeah, this poison actually deals a decent bit of damage to you. Thankfully, you also deal a lot of damage to them. And there's gonna be some more foreshadowing here. Get the Myra and Han hard there. Totally not foreshadowing what will happen. And a force jump on these horn beasts for free uh, force jump fodder. And 
we have to kill these three storm beasts here, and then I'm actually gonna take the extra time. Kill uh, the ones over here, because we have to be at this part later, and these guys can actually trap me here. Ooh, I almost died. Oh, it's very sketchy. I did not see my HP at go to almost zero there. that horn beast and then this one and yeah, as you see we're doing a huge amount of damage now pretty much and then we get this uh, greater storm beast here which hopefully I'll get the one hit on it it's rare to get the one hit but it'd be pretty cool if we did them up here. Force power here, and we're... Yeah, what this force jump does? Almost. If I crit, I probably would've gotten it. So, final level up here. 15, and then force shield. And yeah, we pretty much end this game at level 12. Very similar to Coder 1, where we end the game, incidentally, also at level 12. And yeah, we don't even learn, like, the secondary, uh, tree, just because, uh, I believe you need level 15 from it, for it, and yeah, we don't even hit level 15. I'm actually gonna make a manual save here, because, like I said, this game likes to crash. And then we get this fancy cutscene where the Sith give uh, the exile a very warm welcome. We haven't gotten in the crash here, but I shouldn't see any. We we did have our run invalidated though, but. Okay, it's still valid in my heart. Yeah, we get now here the final fight with Honkar here. And that's why the reason why I grabbed the Deadly Mines is because of this fight. Honhar has a lot of HP. Honhar? Oh, you have to be kidding me. Uh so we have a pretty detailed guide for this on the on speedruns.com. You can search for a code or two. And we have speedruns for this and for Coder 1 as well. I would personally recommend Coder 1 glitchless as it's a little more friendlier than this one. But Coder 2, honestly, as a first category, this would be like, if you want to specifically speedrun Coder 2, this is actually probably one of the more friendlier categories. Speedrun. But yeah, we have detailed guides for this. We also have a Discord where if you have any questions about the speedrun, you can uh, ask, and everyone in the community is very happy to answer. We love helping. We love helping people. We would love to see more Clover One and Two runners in general. And yeah, this last section here is really silly. I don't know why they added it. I hate this section. I'm using hate here because it is a very strong word to express my feelings for this. I forgot to grab the first one, but we have to basically uh, activate all the Nash Shadow Core thingy-majiggers. And that's why I took the time to kill most of the Storm Beasts here, because Remote can't really deal with them, and we deal a lot of damage. And we only have three re nine repair kits. And then we take a Walk of Shame back here. Because I have a bad memory. I don't think it's coming next year because I believe uh, EA has a license on Star Wars games until uh, 2023, I think? And EA won't be the, the game developer. Asper will be. 
if I recall correctly. So I don't think we'll be seeing a Coda remake for another two, three, four years. But I'm sure it's in the works still. But yeah, there's two in this area and two in the next area. A lot of this is just, uh, floating around. But yeah, that Meyer segment is the last bit of cheese we use because mines make everything better. Now, floating around at the speed of sound, sure. Are the Coder games canon? I believe they are considered legacy, but there's aspects of it. But I believe the next Coder remake will be considered canon. I get, I think. <laughs> Don't quote me on that. But Coder 1 and 2 are, I believe, no longer canon. And are considered a uh, legacy. But yeah, one more shot of core here, and we are off to the final segment. Yeah, I think they call Extended Universe Legacy. I forgot the term for it. Yeah, this is the last, uh... Shadow Generator, which is basically the thingy to blow up Malachor. Yeah, Legends. Okay, that's the right term. But yeah, this is the last time and then most of this just mobs are running around. And dealing with uh, the mass amount of sift that we need to deal with. And yes, this is a solo part. Yeah, we see, uh... Your fellow sus, uh... Sus friend back here, back at it again. I'm gonna use the lacrity here so I can keep my speed. And... But basically, we should be very close to the end here. Owie. There's some force jump fodder here in this next room. Yeah, you do have to heal here because these folks uh, deal a lot of damage to you. And yes, we have saved the very few hyper stims we get for this last part. I'll be fully stimming up here. Let's get these folks. And we are off to the races, and you hey, it's uh, Dark Scion here. So we have to kill him a total of four times here. Because he never dies, TM. But eventually he will. Sometimes you can one-hit him. Pretty rare, though. He has a lot of HP, as you see. Oh, there's that one hit. There we go. And then he dies very ceremoniously. And then now we are off to face the final boss, which is, uh, unironically, our uh, friendly neighborhood old lady. We're just gonna force jump to her and try to deal as much damage as possible before we get trolled by this third. She does that. The 
should suck HP for me, she'll also stun you. She also, at once uh, he, she gets low enough HP, she'll just spam that all day long. Thankfully, we can out DPS her. I'm gonna him again. And then she summons these floating lightsabers that deal a lot of damage to them, but we can just focus her. And out DPS them before they kill us. And time's coming up very soon as we get the last hit in time. At last, it is done. You are greater than any I have ever trained. By killing me here, you have rewarded me more than you can possibly know. And that's a coder to any percent glitchless. So thanks for having me for Bioarathon for Coder 1 and Coder 2. This is a fun speedrun. Actually, we didn't get any bad crashes except for that weird glitch on Nihilus, which, you know, happens. Bad RNG. But otherwise, yeah, you just see the power that this build eventually has just because crit hits deal a ton of damage. And these folks have, like, a lot of HP. But anyhow, I'd like to give a shout out to the Coder community. Very cool people. Helped me learn a lot about Coder 1 and helped me a lot with the resources for routing this. So shout out to 30 for also having, making up the original route for this. I just simply approved upon what he had. And uh, Chaos for helping me out a lot with the routing, as well as uh, Red Mage. And that's pretty much it on my side. Thanks everyone. For I hope you all enjoyed the run, and thanks for having me. I believe this is also the end of the marathon, so... I hope you all enjoy the runs that we had for Bioarathon. I certainly... I certainly did. Alright, I'm going to pull you off, and then we're gonna do a... Hi, um, this is the end of the first Bioarathon. Um, this was fun. <laughs> we had a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> no, oh, to the, I'll, I'll read them next marathon. Don't worry about it. Uh, anyways, <laughs> um, thank you for uh, participating, all of you guys, and for, you know, just watching. Uh, this was an idea that I had for like five years now. So it was good to actually finally do it. <laughs> um, in terms of like general thank yous, thank you for RPG Limit Break to allow for allowing us to stream on their channel. Uh, we had between 200 to 600 viewers on this marathon, which is insane for just a first time marathon. So that was that was awesome. Um, thank you to, so Letters, of course, for co-organizing with this with me, uh, to Chaos Drifter and Osmorn, who are the two other streamers for this marathon. So that was a big help that they gave us. Um, thank you to Poexel, if I pronounce this correctly, <laughs> uh, who is the guy in RPG Limit Break that deals with uh you know community content like this uh and yeah thank you to all of our runners uh we had a lot of different runs that was really fun uh some game didn't make some games didn't make it that's fine we'll, we'll organize an, another one with more by our games all right guys but uh yeah um <laughs> i don't know if you have any specific thanks uh or stuff like that that you want to say letters 
Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> Wait, uh, letters is muted. You're muted, man. <laughs> you forget to unmute. You forget to unmute your mic, probably. <laughs> it's okay. That's fine. Anyways. Yeah, you were affecting the runners. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. No problem. <laughs> uh, what was I saying? Um, yeah, so I just want to thank all the runners for our, um, submitting games. We initially, you know, we were slow on getting submissions, but everything came together in the end. Um, yeah. I think, you know, next time there's some games that we definitely like to see if we have another one um yeah dragon age definitely. origins and dragon age 2 i think are the big standout yeah things, we're, we're there's some... the big there's also mass effect 3 that i would like to yeah. to see maybybe if someone would be yeah, willing to mass run effect it 3 would be nice um <laughs> and then a few like more... games. um yeah maybe some of the more some more of the uh weirder bioware stuff that's come out um yeah MDK so, 2 is another... MDK 2, Sonic old, Chronicles. Old game we didn't have. Sonic Chronicles is another old game we didn't have. There are Neverwinter, Neverwinter Nights, Nights and Jade Empire that we did not have either of. Uh, we can yes, also theoretically sadly. do Neverwinter Nights 2 because that kind of was in the same situation oh, yeah. Yeah. as... It's in the Kotor same vein as Kotor 2. Yeah. Uh, Bioware handed the engine and all that off to Obsidian to um, make the sequel. We have yep. some Mass Effect Infiltrator. I would really Mass like to have a run of yeah, that. Guess, yeah, that'd be cool. Um, I think that's definitely doable because there's speed runs out there. Um, yeah. We have various expansions for some of these games. Yeah. I know the Awakening could be fun. Baldur's Gate 2 runner was saying um, that there are some preliminary looks being done into the Baldur's Gate 2 expansion, so that'd be cool. Um, oh, that'd be interesting, yeah. We also have uh, Dragon Age Awakening, which I have always wanted to route a speedrun for um, that we could get in. So there's a lot of potential for the future, and obviously someday we will get um, more Bioware games to add onto the list. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. Hopefully. Dies. <laughs> well, uh, but um, I think we'll at least get a Dragon one Age thing, 4 someday. Yeah, one thing I can say is that we'll definitely do another one of these before the next Bioware game. Oh, yeah. Presumably we will do another one of these before the next Bioware game comes out. <laughs> yeah, let's hope. Um, but yeah, this was a ton of fun. Uh, contrary to popular belief, this wasn't my first marathon, either as an organizer or as a restreamer, even though we did have a few issues, but that's you know, that's have... just part of the life of a marathon. Yeah, I have done restreaming <laughs> once, but that was in a much better situation where we had an RTMP server. Yeah. Uh, so I don't I mean, have to do much. Yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, uh, but to be fair, we didn't have any like crashing issues. We didn't have stuff like that, which is the, the big issues that you can't always control. So it was good. Um, I also so enjoyed... I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy. I also enjoyed how the marathon did a good job of, especially in the first day, did a good job of showing uh, how taxing it can be to run Bioware games sometimes. We had lots oh, yeah. of people have various types of tech issues and weird, yeah. that's never happened before, and I feel like that's perfectly um, on. That's on cue. On cue. That's perfectly what we would have expected. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. So yeah, uh, just uh, j just final statistics. We averaged uh, 277 viewers during this uh, marathon, and we had a peak at 602. That was um, I don't know on what game actually. I think <laughs> the highest I saw was during Dragon Age Inquisition, so it might have been then. Makes sense. Does it say yeah. what time your peak was at? Uh, I only have a graph, and we've no time, sadly, so it's fine. 
Yeah, oh, but been, anyways. Sorry, someone yeah. said Mass Effect 1 Legendary. I was asleep for that run, so it could have been Mass Effect 1 Legendary. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah that's there. true. Yeah, there, okay. there, yeah, there was a raid with like 400 people, okay. so that, ma that makes sense. All right, yeah. that makes sense. Um, yeah. Um, anyways. There's been a lot of questions in... about VODs that should um, be sorted I'm out gonna... by Strike. Yeah, I'm gonna do the VODs um, tonight. Um, so I'm gonna, the way VODs work on this is I'm gonna cut them up tonight and then they will be published to the RPG Limit Break YouTube channel. Um, yeah, so this, this thing, yeah. Uh, so if you've missed anything, I know I have, uh, there will, they will be there. Yeah, and what was I gonna say? Um... If you want to keep track of when those are getting posted, or I uh, just want to know anything that's going on with any of Fire speedruns, uh, we do have yeah. a Discord. I will grab the invite the in a second. Yeah. Uh, why didn't uh, uh, I just like to thank again uh, RPG Limit Break because yeah. it is hard to actually make like community marathons that have um you know that reach people and this was like the easiest 500 viewers of my life <laughs> we literally pressed the, the start stream on rpg limit break and we automatically get got viewers um i think people were really interested in it so that was great um yeah and yeah, uh, I'll definitely get on the VODs tonight. They should up, uh, upload during the night. And yeah, uh, join our Discord. We have a lot of games. Uh, however, one thing that really was great about this, you know, this event was that we managed to overgrow our own community yep. and to reach Baldur Gates runners, Coder runners, Tor runners, etc. So yes. it's it's very it's very cool that we managed to to, to yeah. just outgrow our, our little community to to reach ours. Yep, and uh, <coughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah, uh, if you're Discord, if you're interested, sorry, no say, say, our <laughs> Discord that that we've shared mainly is Dragon Age, Mass Effect. Uh, I think Anthem is technically yeah. in there too. Um, it is in there, yeah. And Jade Empire, you know, Kotor. Jade Empire, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Everyone but, else has their own kind of discords, but it was it, nice to get them yeah. all in. If you were, if you're interested by any of the speedruns that you've seen during this weekend, uh, remember to check them out on speedrun.com. Each of these games has a speedrun.com page. Uh, with either your own Discord linked or, you know, with resources, guides, um, stuff that you can use to learn the run. We would be glad to see new runners for Bioware games. So definitely, definitely check it out. Yeah. And uh, yeah. yeah. Thanks, everyone. All right. All right. Uh, yeah, with that being said, uh, I think we'll be off. Yeah. Have a good rest of the weekend. For those that still have a weekend going, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, enjoy, enjoy. Good night.